Okay, this is the second video in the recapping pieces of the toying that we didn't have a lot of time to talk about in class series. Uh, it is again divided up by the logic of how much can Dr. Carpenter fit on a whiteboard? Um, so, I'm beginning here on page 94, uh, sorry, 95, apparently I can't read numbers. It's not off to a great start, guys. Okay, uh, on page 95, uh, Cahoon has this exchange with a one of the Connachtman's um, charioteers. I have misspelled charioteers on my whiteboard. There's only one T. Um, and the only thing that I want to kind of call out here is he has this exchange and he tells the charioteer a couple of times, no need to worry, and he says, I have no quarrel with charioteers. He's not going to fight the underlings, okay? He's not here to fight the, he's not going to fight the help, right? And he's, look, I know, you just work here. You know, I, I'm i only angry at the manager. Um, so, the reason I, like, I mean, that's kind of interesting in terms of what the ancient Irish considered heroic and how a hero behaves, you know, like, noblemen do not go around, you know, lording it, you know, like, um, they don't abuse the underlings, they don't abuse the help, like, if you're mad at another noble, you're mad at that noble and, you know, like the, the rank, the ranking officials in their group, you are not mad at the guy who's just doing the, who's just driving the car, basically. So there's that. But also it makes a nice little, um, touch back or touch forward, I guess in this case, it, it presages, uh, something that we will talk about a little bit when we get to the really into the medieval period in European literature, which is the chivalric tradition and how, like, what knightly behavior is supposed to be. And it typically involves a lot of um, codified rules for how you how a knight should treat uh, women, servants, people who are weaker than he is. So, um, and then skipping a little bit onto page 103, this is the business about Fergus's sword that I've always found really funny. Um, and sort of, in an odd way, sweet as compared to the way that um, the way that Achilles's armor is portrayed, for example. Um, because what happens here on page one hundred three is um, they split the army up, and half of them go with Ilil one way, and the other half, including Maeve, go with Fergus another way. And Ilil says, hmm, it's interesting. And he tells his charioteer, so this is the help again, he tells his charioteer, you know what, uh, take the day off from driving me and shadow them. Tell them. See, what, see what's going on, because um, they sure are friendly. And it turns out, indeed, that... Um, you know, like we see them in the ford or like by the ford together. And it says where they had lingered behind as the army moved on and Fergus's sword was laid down close by him. Why was his sword lying down? Aha. Uh -huh. If we skip down a little bit, it's because, indeed, they'd been getting it on. So you would think that when the charioteer reports back, Alil's going to be super upset. But no, he thinks this is funny as hell. <laughs> So this is kind of a nice plot twist and very different from how a lot of European literature would treat a similar situation, right? His wife is screwing around with Fergus, and he's like, <laughs> this is a hoot. He literally says, like, the, his first line when the charioteer tells him this is not off with her head or whatever. It is, eh, fair enough. <laughs> Truly, what he says, like, the charioteer reports is, as you thought, they are sleeping together. And Ella says, eh, fair enough. But he's going to get a practical joke out of it anyway. So um, as proof, the charioteer, being a forward-thinking kind of guy, had taken a swipe Fergus's sword while Fergus was, Fergus was otherwise occupied. And so he gives it to Alil, and now Fergus doesn't have a sword, and he, like, cuts off a branch to put in his scabbard so it looks like he has a sword. And there are all of these, like, for, like, Many, many pages, there are, like, all of these phallic jokes about his missing sword and how he can't, you know, get out a weapon. Um, but there are two key things here. Like, there's some awareness that Fergus feels a little guilty. He says, this is terrible, and Mavis is like, what? What's terrible? What? What are you talking about? 
And Fergus doesn't say, like, oh, no, I've lost my sword. He says, the wrong I have done, I will. So he, like, immediately figures out, like, I know who, I know who is behind the missing sword situation. Um, and he feels not, like, he feels badly for, like, sleeping with his buddy's wife, which many of us probably would. Um, but the scale of this, like the scale of how awful it is, or like how guilty he should feel, or how Eilul should react, is very, very different from what we see with Menelaus and Helen. <laughs> okay, like that is a very different scenario, and a very different response to your wife getting some extra on the side. Um, and so this results in this ex long, long exchange of sort of insulting jokes and back and forth, but there's a clear sense that they're, like, sometimes it's serious, but there's a really clear sense in the repeated exchanges between Fergus and, Fergus and Alil, between Alil and Maeve, between Maeve and Fergus, like this back and forth, back and forth, back and forth that goes on for, like, I cut a bunch of it out, but it goes on for a long time, um, through many further pieces of story. There's a there's a clear sense that in addition to, like, sometimes they have serious things to talk about, along the way they are also ribbing each other. Like, it's friendly. Um, there's a verbal sparring, but it's not, it's not like Achilles calling Agamemnon old dog face. And, like, Achilles clearly hates his guts. These guys are still hanging out. Like, they play, they play chess together. They have parties together. <laughs> like, they continue being buddies. Like, this is, it becomes an in-joke for them. Um, that's all that I can fit on that whiteboard, so I'm going to end the video here. Um, and if you have questions about, you know, this stuff, be sure and ask me in class tomorrow. All right.